Yeah, you could do that. Sure. Would you say, would you that to no, what I would have done, my, if there was a minus here, to be logical, that would put a minus here, plus here, and a minus there. And then I would have to calculate the length of this vector. But you know what? The thing about vector length is the length of this vector is the same as the length of that vector. They just point in opposite directions. Like here's a and minus a. So they have the same lengths no matter. I mean, the, it's, minus just changes the direction. It, it inverts it through the origin. <coughs> and you'd still get 300 cats. Sorry, we can't get away from that. I mean, <laughs> give me some canvas bags, find me a river. Oh, we're taping this. Oh, I'm just, oops. <laughs> Come and get me, PETA. <laughs> Bunch of losers. That's right. That's right, I said it. All right. Um, okay, so I, I hope you can see how you would, uh, you know, create unit vectors from a given vector. Uh, more than that, you know, we can we can do kind of uh, more interesting things. Like, here here's another example. Um, suppose I want. Um, um, oh, I never found v hat, dear. Did I? What was v hat? Sorry, guys. I lost lost track. Who, 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 who distracted me? It's somebody here's fault. It's probably me. Um, so v hat would be one over three, um, but um, but um, two. Minus one, two. Like, what happened to the hundreds? They cancel. All right, that's my other point to you is if you have, like, if you're calculating, let's say, CW hat, well, that's CW, right? Divided by the length of CW, right? But you can pull the C out. And you just get I mean, I'm assuming that the C is positive when I do this, right? So I'm just telling you this because when you have a vector that has like the same annoying 10 to the minus 9th blah 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 when you guys, guys take square you know squ some of the squares of things like 10 to the minus 9th you tend to make a mistake well you can avoid this mistake if you know about this little little trick or you could just be more careful with your calculator which also would be a good life skill to try to acquire okay uh, one more example find vector v length 7 in direction of um, let's say a vector which is uh, 1 2 3 i'm not putting units on because that's kind of beside the point here so how do you do this i mean there are different ways here's the solution i think of so i think about okay a maybe Maybe A is like this direction, right? But what I want to do is I want to have it. This is length 3. Maybe A has length 3 just for discussion's sake. It doesn't, but I suppose it did. <laughs> I don't have enough markers. I don't have decimal markers, so it's hard for me to do it directly. I guess I could just make it have length 3. How would I do that? Change the 3 to a 2, right? in view of the last example. <coughs> okay, now it has length 3. So here's A. But I want a vector that has length 7. So what I really do, what I really want is just 7 of these. Right? So all I have to do is to calculate A hat and multiply by 7. And that's my answer. Does that make sense? So what's A hat? one over a times a right so that's one over the square root of one plus two squared plus two squared one two two that's one third one two two 
So my v by geometry is 7 times a hat. <coughs> so I just have 7 thirds times 1, 2, 2. And there you go. I don't think it makes it a better answer always. Now, if I said to leave your answer in Cartesian, um, you know, like Cartesian format, or maybe I said give me the Cartesian coordinates, uh, the Cartesian components of the vector, um, the scalar Cartesian components, to be, to be absolutely annoyingly clear, then I would have to multiply through, right, 7 thirds, um, 14 thirds. Now, the way I might do that is I might ask the question, like, tell me what, <coughs> what is vy for this v, right? And there it would matter to multiply through because in order to find out what the y component is of this vector, I actually need to know what it is, right? I mean, it's 7 thirds times, uh, times 2. It's 14 thirds, right? So this is vy. Now, generally speaking in here, we do want decimal answers, okay? Um, and as, as a general point of order, I would like four, four, four digits. You're like, well, what about significant figures? Um, yes, significant figures matter, but it matters more that I can tell what you did mathematically in your solution in here. So for that reason, I just want four significant, mathematically significant digits in your answer, all right? So you don't have to keep eight numbers or something like sometimes every once in a while a person calculate with like ten digits. No, <laughs> you're not Newton. It's okay. Um, you know, four digits would be enough, typically speaking. Yeah, there's a question. Uh, on occasion, it, it may. I, yeah, that that's not not an unreasonable comment. <laughs> okay. Now. <clears throat> So these are the basic tools we have to work with. Length, unit vectors, right? But there's more. There's the so-called vector products. There's two main vector products we're interested in in here. And we'll use these throughout the course. Um, and they even allow me to say some of the things I've already said more elegantly. Um, so I probably, sh I don't know, maybe I should have said them before now. You could argue. Um, and those are the dot and cross products. You got a dot product, all right, and you also have the cross product. All right, so the dot product is a scalar, all right? And what I mean by that is it's a number, all right? It's not a, not a vector. In contrast, the cross product is a vector, all right? So they're, they're really quite different things. All right, well, let me just throw them out there for you. So a dot b, but the thing that unites the dot product and the cross product, they're, they're both things that you can do with a given pair of vectors, all right? And I'm thinking three-dimensionally here, but the dot product is actually defined in, in any number of dimensions. Cross product, just three, three dimensions. But a dot b, it's equal to um, a1, b1, plus a2, b2, plus a3, b3. Um, if you'd rather, you could say ax, bx, ay, by, az, bz. I mean, you can label the components different ways if you want. So like, sometimes I might use the notation v2 over here, right? In that, that previous example, I might say vy is v2. So that, that's the basic definition, all right? So about a page and a half of algebra and law of cosines later, you can prove that this is in fact equal to A times B times the cosine of the angle between them. That formula, is, that's, the, that's, a derivative, that's a property of the dot product. That's not the definition of the dot product. The definition of the dot product is what I wrote here, okay? 
this is a theorem. It's a relatively deep theorem. It's essentially equivalent to the law of cosines. When you use that relation, it reveals geometric things which are non-obvious. Okay? We'll use that a lot. All right. Now, one of the first things I would tell you about the dot product, of course, is it tells you about the angle between vectors, right? Because of this theorem. In particular, you can see that theta is going to be the inverse cosine of what? a dot b, right? Divided by a b. And that's what? Provided what? a and b are what? Yeah, non-zero. Zero is a trouble, troublemaker. What happens when the angle between two vectors is, say, 90 degrees? What's, yeah, what's the cosine of 90? Zero, right? So the dot product of two vectors which are 90 degrees apart, right, is zero. I would say that those vectors are perpendicular, or sometimes we'll say that they're orthogonal. All right, so I would write that A perpendicular to B if um, theta is equal to 90 degrees, which means that A dot B is what? Zero. Okay? So that, that's orthogonal vectors have dot products which are zero. Which is actually pretty awesome because if you think about it, you know, here's an example of why that's just so amazing. Um, if I give you vector, v, uh, vector A equals to 1, 2, 3, and vector B equals to 1, 1, 1, and then I ask you, are these vectors perpendicular? Geometrically, that's a very taxing question, right? How would you visualize that? I mean, the answer is almost certainly no, but um, A goes a little bit more in the x direction, a little bit more in the, in the z direction, so it's kind of like, roughly speaking, up here somewhere. Okay, here's the theta. But in terms of direct geometric reasoning, how would you show that that angle is not 90 degrees? I submit to you it's challenging. However, this is not. A dot B is 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. Is 6 0? Nope, so they're not orthogonal. But there's more. I can actually calculate theta without that much effort here. What's the length of A? Square root of 1 plus 4 plus 9, right? Square root of the sums of the squares. Uh, that's what? Square root of um, 14? What's the length of B? Square root of 3, right? So theta then will be the inverse cosine of 6 divided by the square root of 3 times the square root of 14, but by the way, that means you can multiply the uh, numbers inside the square root, which is what? Uh, 3 times 14 is 42. Ah, but you know, it's everywhere. There you go. Now, I don't know about you, not the sort of thing I can do off the top of my head. Let's see here. 6. Oh, I'm in radian mode. That won't be good. Let's see here. 3. There's nothing wrong with it. Six, which is not what I, my default use degrees in here. Six divided by the square root of 42. Of course, my Casio has spit back at me, square root of 42 over seven. If you have one of these, there's this SD button, which will change to a decimal. 0.92582, blah, 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 anyway. So I need to calculate the inverse cosine of that. I get 22.2 degrees. Well, 20, I'm sorry, four, four numbers. 22.21 degrees, 22.21 degrees. Okay, every, every once in a while I feel guilty. That's approximately 22.21 degrees. I slap a little, it's approximate. 
and there you go. I mean, it would take me a long time in the wood shop to create a scale model so I could eventually measure that <laughs> measure that angle directly, you know. And yet we just did it in like two minutes with a dot product. That's what dot products are for in a nutshell is to measure angles. But they also measure lengths, right? What's the length of a vector in terms of the dot product? What's a dot a? It's ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. What's that? That's the length squared, right? So a dot a is in fact a squared. Which makes me happy. I don't know about you. Now, the cross product. Now, oh, I got a minute left. That's surely enough time to introduce the cross product, cross product yes? Would you say that, like, any vector and a zero vector are both R or orthogonal? That is true. The zero vector is orthogonal to all other vectors. Okay. Yep. Um, the cross product, on the other hand, like I told you, is a vector. And what is the cross product in a nutshell? The cross product of A and B, A cross B, all right, is a vector which is perpendicular to both A and B. So that's the purpose. purpose of the cross product is to produce a vector which is not in the same plane as the given two vectors, A and B. Basically, that's, that's the whole purpose of the cross product. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to define it today. We don't have time, but we'll come back to that as, as the need arises. Maybe next class I'll, I'll go through some. Thanks, guys. <coughs>